Welcome to another episode of the best leadership podcast ever. I'm Jeff Matlow. I'm happy to have you here. Today, we are going to talk about wombat poop. Why? Because there's a huge lesson in strategic leadership to be had from wombat poop. You excited? I am too. Here's an interesting fact. Wombats are the only animals in the entire universe that poop in squares. Now, I'm not saying that they all form a square to go poop together and they're not square dancing and they certainly aren't a marching band. What I'm saying is that every wombat's feces is shaped like a cube. Interesting, right? I thought so too. If you don't know what a wombat is, I'm going to tell you because that's the kind of guy I am. A wombat is what happens when a capybara and a teddy bear have a love child. However, unlike its parents, the wombat isn't a rodent or a stuffed animal. It's actually a marsupial, which is closer to a kangaroo and koala than anything else. And like 70% of all other marsupials in the world and 100% of Vegemite eaters, the wombat is from Australia. Now, none of this is important to my story. I just want to make sure you have the image of the furry creature pooping out a casino's quantity of dice. But fear not, my friend, there's actually a point to my story. And the point lies in the leadership lessons within that wombat poop. But I'll get to that in a second. First, I want to talk about Kodak. Here's an interesting fact that you probably never cared about, but you're going to in a minute. Kodak actually invented the digital camera. Surprising? Ah, not really. You see, Kodak was already in the camera business, kinda, sorta. They were the leading photo film company in the world. Inventing the digital camera wasn't surprising, but it was a huge step forward for them. In fact, it could have transformed the Kodak business from the analog of the 20th century film to the digital world of the 21st. In fact, this invention alone could have positioned Kodak as the most important brand in digital photography. Instead, it led them to bankruptcy. You see, though they invented the digital camera, they ignored all growth strategy, or growth strategy around digital photography. Instead, Kodak doubled down on the operations of their traditional film photo business. And in the blink of an eye, the digital revolution came and steamrolled right over Kodak. They invented the future and had no strategic leadership to own it, so they all but disappeared. Which leads us to Xerox. The name Xerox was so popular in the photocopier market that the brand was practically synonymous with the term make a copy. Back in the 1970s and 80s, make a Xerox of this was as common to say as, let me Google that is now. That's just how big the company was. But here's an interesting fact you probably don't know. Xerox invented the personal computer and the laser printer. Oh, and they invented Ethernet and the computer mouse as well, and so many other things. In fact, it's safe to say that Xerox was critical in paving the path for the entire computer age. They discovered a generation of products that are just standard in our lives right now. But discovering something means absolutely nothing if you don't do anything with it. And that's what happened to Xerox. Though they had so many groundbreaking inventions that would change the world, they didn't prioritize a growth strategy to incorporate those inventions in their business model. Instead, what Xerox did is they doubled down on the operations of their photocopier business. It was a strategic leadership failure. In fact, rather than building personal computers, which they invented, they decided to simply license that technology to someone else. And as luck would have it, along came this ambitious young fella who thought that Xerox's ideas were pretty cool. And somehow the kid convinced Xerox to license that technology to him in exchange for a few shares of a startup company. Well, that kid's name happened to be Steve Jobs and the startup company was Apple, and yada, 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 Apple became the largest company in the world on the back of Xerox's personal computer. Meanwhile, Xerox went bankrupt. 
And this, of course, brings us right back to the wombat and the importance of square poop in your leadership life. One of the most commonly cliched idioms in the human language is trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. I'm guessing you know what it means, right? Right? It's, it's when you try to make something fit in a, in a place where it really doesn't belong. So like in the business world, for instance, if you have a technically savvy software developer and you put them in a role as a strategic marketing lead, that's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. Make sense? Good. I've got a fundamental problem with this square peg in a round hole thinking, and Kodak and Xerox are prime examples of this, which is probably why I brought them up in the first place. You see, when people say you can't fit a square peg in a round hole, they're always referring to it as a matter of effort. The thinking is that you'd have to force the company to do something that is operationally unable to do at that time. And that's the problem. Because to fit a square peg in a round hole is not about operations and effort, it's about strategy. Let me explain. As a strategic leadership consultant, I work with a lot of companies that need to transform themselves in order to grow. In fact, many of my consulting clients are 30 to 130 person founder-led companies, and almost every founder-led company at that stage has to transform itself to get beyond the plateau. But transformation's not an overnight thing. You don't flip a switch and suddenly improve company culture. You don't press a button and suddenly triple your sales. And you don't try to pound a square peg in a round hole without expecting everything to fall apart into pieces. If the company has become used to operating in a certain way, sudden changes to those operations will usually create more chaos than calm. Kodak couldn't immediately turn into a digital camera company. Xerox couldn't immediately turn into a personal computer company. And your teenager won't immediately start cleaning the room every day when they've been a slob for most of their life, despite your efforts to help them change, which always seem to lead to arguments anyway. But I digress. The wombat didn't magically come into existence with its poops already cubed. If poop were meant to be square, it would have been that way for more than just one living being, right? Tap into your inner Charles Darwin for a second, okay? Let's talk evolution. The wombat creates square feces for a reason, an evolutionary reason. It has a purpose, and over a period of time, a long time, evolution slowly altered its bodily operations to achieve that ultimate goal, which in the wombat's case is cubed poop. The wombat's poop is living proof that with a focus on purpose, strategy, and patience, you can, in fact, fit a square peg through a round hole. So you're asking, how does this apply to business and strategic leadership? I'm really glad you asked that because I'm actually going to answer it, which is why I started this rant in the first place. You see, we've already established that pounding the square peg through the round hole isn't going to work. That's operationally simplistic thinking. Caveman thinking will try to force that square peg through the round hole. But strategic leadership will try to think of creative ways to make them fit together. How about this? Go to your toolbox and you take out a wood file. And you slowly file down the sides of that round hole. One day you file a little piece off here, the next day a little piece off there. It doesn't feel like things are changing that much. In fact, maybe nobody will even notice the difference from day to day. But after a while of focused filing, people may suddenly notice that the round hole is turning into a different shape, and with enough time, that square will magically fit right through that hole where it was meant to be in the first place. To do this in the real world, there are three important elements you have to keep in mind. One, understand your end goal. Two, develop the strategy to get there. And three, have the patience to make it happen. So let's say you want to create a more transparent culture. That's your goal. Maybe you start with an assessment of how the team members view the current level of transparency in your company. And of course, once you finish that assessment, you need to be transparent with the team about the results. After all, the goal is transparency, right? And perhaps then you ensure that transparency becomes part of your company's core values. And once it's a part of the core 
core values, you begin to integrate those values into employee reviews and weekly one-on-ones. And maybe you have transparent discussions with employees about transparency. Meanwhile, you focus on increasing transparent discussions on Slack or Teams or whatever communication platform you like. And in fact, if you don't use a communications platform, probably time to download Slack, it's free, and tell your team that you're doing it to help create more transparency. I'm sure you see where this is going. Each step is like filing away another part of that round hole. And with enough of these small filing efforts and some patience, you'll have transformed that hole into a place that allows the square peg to fit in perfectly. So next time you're intimidated about trying to make the impossible possible, discard that Xerox and Kodak model of operational planning and embrace the evolution of the wombat's cubed poop. With just a little purpose, strategy, and patience, you too can make your impossible come true. Let me know your thoughts on this. Hit subscribe wherever the subscribe button is to be notified of future episodes. Thanks for listening to the best leadership podcast ever. We'll talk to you next time.